Hi everyone, this is a tutorial on how to get up and running on the YoYo open source board. The first thing you want to do is install your Eclipse development environment with the Android SDK. We're not going to run through that in this example because there's plenty of tutorials out there on the internet on how to do that. If you haven't done that already, refer to this URL and that will give you all the instructions to get up and running there. And once you've done that, then come back here and we'll proceed to step two. So step two is we need to download the YoYo libraries into our Eclipse development environment. So easiest way to do that is go ahead and pop open a browser. And what I do is I just Google YoYo Wiki. And this is, this is the page where you're going to find all the information on the YoYo board. So there's a lot of, lot of good stuff here. If you haven't already read this link, I recommend you do so. This tells you um, all about the pins on the board, um, which pins do what. Very helpful how to power the board, also very good. But for now, let's go to the downloads page. If you have the YoYo Mint board, then at the time of this video, um, we've pre-installed the firmware version 3.23. So you don't need to worry about uploading the firmware on the actual board. You just need to get the firmware and install it on your PC. So let's go ahead and download this guy. And you just want to unzip it somewhere on your hard drive that you can remember. So let's do that right now. And then we can have a quick look at what we just downloaded. So these are the three libraries that you want to import into your Eclipse environment. And that is what is going to enable your Android application to talk to the YoYo board. That's the glue. These are sample code. We're going to run this one here, hello, yo-yo. So let's go ahead and close that. And now let's get into our Eclipse environment. So when Eclipse first loads, sometimes you'll notice down here it's loading the Android libraries. So sometimes that takes a while, so you'll just have to wait a minute. So now let's go ahead and import those three libraries that we just downloaded. So you want to go to File, Import, and we want to pick Existing Projects into Workspace. Next. Now we just browse for that directory that we just downloaded. And we can just do these one at a time. So let's do this one first. And we just pick all the defaults, so hit Finish. And now you can see the first library was just uploaded. So let's go ahead and do it again for the other two. And this you only have to do one time, although um, from time to time the YoYo libraries get updated to add new features. So if that happens, then you would need to also update the latest libraries like this as well. Okay, so this is the last one. This is the library that enables Bluetooth. So we've got the libraries loaded. Now let's load up our sample code. So again, same thing, file import. And we're going to load um, a sample code called, let's see here, hello yo-yo. And this is basically the hello world of um, programming languages. So load up this guy as well. And here we have it. Now. The first thing we need to do with this sample code, oops, sorry, wrong one, is you'll notice I've got some, I've got an error here. And basically it's complaining because in my source code, I'm referring to some libraries, but I don't have those libraries linked to this project. So that's very easy to do. Just click on the project, right click, let's go down to properties, and then you want to click on Android, and we just need to link these libraries. So let's delete the ones that were there because the path is different. Go ahead and add it. And you can see the three libraries. It recognizes them as libraries. And we can just add them one at a time. And after I do this, then now those errors should go away. OK, so far so good. So at this point, we need to change one setting on your phone such that Eclipse can see your phone because when we run this, we're going to want Eclipse to be able to download this Android application to your phone. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So from your phone, you're going to want to go to this path, 
First click on Settings, then go to Applications, then go to Development, and you're going to see a box called USB Debugging. Go ahead and check that. Now, if you're lucky, your PC will automatically install what's called an ADB driver. And here's how you can check if it's there. So on your PC and Device Manager, if you're on a PC, look for ADB. If you see that, then life is good. Let me go ahead and turn off US USB debugging. And now you can see that ADB interface is going to disappear. It's gone. So let me turn it back on. OK, so now let's go back to Eclipse. And then we can run it. And now, since I have ADB, it is going to install that on my actual device. So now it is downloading the code to my phone. Now, just for fun, let me show you what would happen if you didn't have ADB turned on. So let's go to the phone and let's turn off ADB. And I just mentioned this for troubleshooting purposes. So if you don't see the device and instead when you run it, you see the emulator come up like this, then that just means Eclipse didn't find your phone over ADB and you know you have some troubleshooting to do. So if you see something that looks like this, the emulator comes up, then that's what happened. So for now, I'm just going to close it down. So now we've got everything. Let's go ahead and test it out. So we've got our Hello Yo-Yo app, which we uh, downloaded from Eclipse. I've got my Yo-Yo board here. This is a special edition version of the Yo-Yo board called the Yo-Yo Mint. Um, comes in this mint tin. And then there's another version called the Dortalizer, which is pretty much the same thing. It just has an alcohol sensor. And one thing to note about these boards, or about the Yo-Yo in general, is that the power does not come from the USB. So you need to supply your own power to the board. In this case, um, this particular version, both of these boards have an onboard LiPo battery. So the, there's a little switch right here. I'll just go ahead and switch it on. Now I've got power. Underneath this board is a, um, a LiPo battery. If my battery ran out, though, and um, I wanted to power it another way, my other option would be just to use standard USB power. So this board also has a USB power port. I can just plug that in and power the board from any USB power source. So enough with that. Let's go ahead and test it out. So um, this is a very simple app. All it's going to do is when I tap this button, it's going to turn this LED on and off. And that just shows that we can communicate from the phone to the board. Now here's another cool feature. Um, we were connecting over USB, but I can also connect over Bluetooth to do wireless apps, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> so I'll just pop in the USB dongle. And a really cool feature is even though I've popped in the dongle, and let me just unplug this from the phone, so now you can see we're completely wireless. I can go ahead and tap it again, and you can see automatically everything is still working. I didn't even need to restart the app, so that's a pretty nice feature. So that's just to show you how you can go seamless between YouTube, uh, USB connections and Bluetooth. And that's one nice thing about the Yo-Yo architecture is all the connectivity is taken care of for you automatically. Okay, so now we got the hardware working. Let's have a look at the code. So this is the Hello Yo-Yo sample code. And uh, I'll just say that if you've coded in Arduino before, this is going to look a little bit more complicated. It's essentially Java, but it's not that bad uh, once you actually get used to it. Everything in blue here is a comment, so you don't need to worry about that. These are the libraries that our program is using. Our sample code took care of that for us, though. These are all the ones that we would um, imported earlier. But uh, let's have a look at the main part of the program. So this is the first thing we want to think about, and this is simply telling Android, use this layout file. And the layout file is nothing more than what the screen looks like on the phone. And in Android, you'll find all of that under this resource folder. Go to resource, then go to layout, double click on main.xml, which is typically what the, the default name of the layout is. And so there you can see there's our button that we had on our program, um, and there's some text, some dummy text. So that was the first part. Then you can see here we're just declaring a toggle button, which is basically that button right there in our code. And then here's the key part. This is the part where Yo-Yo comes in. And um, this actually is very similar to Arduino. And the way this works is there's a one-time setup routine here. 
So anything in this setup space will run essentially the first time, basically when you connect on the yo-yo, and then everything in the loop will run in, an, in a constant loop, just like on Arduino. So if you're used to Arduino, this is pretty much exactly the same way it works. So here you can see we're defining an LED, which in this case we're using the onboard LED, which happens to be pin zero. So we're making that definition as a digital output. And then in our loop, we're saying, okay, let's check the button. If the button is checked, then write to that LED. And that's, that's really all there is to it. Again, this runs in a constant loop, um, just like you would have in a loop on, on your Arduino code. And that's pretty much it. So at this point, I hope that was helpful. Um, this should allow you to get up and running, and, and now it's just a matter of whatever you can think of in terms of what an Android app can do, combining that with some sensors, sky's the limit. Enjoy.